Okay, so now we move to the next part of our lesson. Uh, we are going to discuss about box plots now. Okay, so this is another way to represent data. Previously, we learned uh, using histograms how to represent data. So now we are going to learn how to represent data by using box plots. A box plot can be drawn to represent important features of the data. Okay, so what is a box plot? Yes, so box plot is having a different, it's a different type of representation and mainly it shows important features of the data. So what are these important features? It shows the quartiles, maximum and minimum values and any outliers. So basically by looking at a box plot, what it does is it shows you mainly the quartiles can very clearly be seen. And you will see very clearly the lowest data point and the highest data point. And you will also see whether there are any outliers. So look at the way that a box plot, how we actually uh, draw a box plot. Look at this. And you can see in this block, uh, you can see how uh, it looks. It looks, you can see clearly there is a box drawn and there are some uh, special lines they have drawn here. So they, are, they have labeled every single line. Okay, so in the box plot, first thing is with crosses. With these crosses, we mark the outliers anything who is outside the boundaries we mark them with crosses and then you can see the place where the box plot start and the place where the box plot ends we call this as whiskers of the box plot so these whiskers i think you can see where it starts and ends. the starting value they say this is the lowest value that is not an outlier do you see so over here this value could be the lowest value that is not an outlier or sometimes we also use the Boundary for outlier. Who is the boundary for outlier? Boundary for up, uh, outlier is what we calculated previously as upper boundary and lower boundary. So this could be the lower boundary. Or, or else it could be what? It doesn't always have to be the lower boundary. It could also be what? The lowest value in your data set that is not an outlier. Are you with me? Okay, so it depends. Most of the time we go with the first rule. What is the first one? The lowest value that is not an outlier. So we don't mark the boundaries. So it depends on the question. We will go for the questions to see how it's done. Okay, and then look at the place where the box plot starts. So what is the box plot? Here, the box plot starts with the lower quartile. Can you see this value over here? So here, this, in this case, the lower quartile is 30. Can you see? So the box plot starts with the lower quartile and then the median. Can you see the middle value in the box is the median and the box ends at the upper quartile. The box ends at the upper quartile. And then you can see the, bar, the, the, la, the final part is again the whisker. And you can see the whisker ends at where? The highest value that is not an outlier, which means you have your upper boundary. So the first value that is inside the upper boundary, that doesn't exceed it. Okay, because if there's anyone exceeding the upper boundary, it becomes an outlier. Are you with me? So that would be again, if there is an outlier, then you will mark it with a cross. Can you see? Depending on the value, because you can see there's a scale here. So it's according to the scale that we are marking these values. Can you see? We are not just randomly marking, but it's the scale down here that tells us exactly where to mark each, each point. Okay, so over here, this value, uh, it's the highest value that is not an outlier or, else, or it could even be the upper boundary. It could even be the upper boundary for outliers. Okay, again, one more really, uh, one important thing here, you need to understand that, uh, you know, that lower quartile is Q1, right? This is Q1, right? This is Q2. This is Q3. And this is like the lowest value of your data set, right? And this is the upper, uh, highest value. So you need to realize now, even though the box plot has different spacings here, what do you think about the amount of data inside? Now, even though the spacings look different, what do you think about the amount of data? Now, you know uh, what, what we do here, right? You have a data set. You have some amount of data set here, a data, set of data values. And all, basically all you do is, you know, Q2 means exactly the middle of the data set, right? Q1 is you divide it into a quarter. Q3 is three quarters. Are you with me? And you should know that what? That these quartiles divide the data into four equal parts, right? Are you with me? So whatever the amount of data that you have, always remember in each section, you have how much percentage of data? You have? 25% of data. You have 25% of data in every point, in, in between each and every one of these gaps. Are you with me? So over here, from, uh, from, from the start to the point Q1, you have 25% of your data values over in this part. Can you see? And between Q1 to Q2, you have another 25% of your data. 
and between Q2 to Q3, you have another 25%. So in this case, this 25% of data are lying closer to each other. That is why the gap is smaller. Can you see over here between Q1 and Q2, the, 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 the three data, the, let's see, whatever the amount of data you have, they have a little bit of a gap because you arrange your data in ascending order, right? You do arrange your data in ascending order before you find Q1, Q2, Q3. So there, there's a larger gap because the values, individual values inside here have a larger gap, the value wise. Over here, value wise, the values are closer to each other. That's why the, the Q2 and Q3 are closer. Can you understand? And the final one is from Q3 to the end. So again, you have another 25% of your data here. Is this clear? Okay, so these are things that you need to understand when you're using the box plot. Okay. All right, so now we'll move to exercise 3C. Question number one, they say a group of students took a test. The summary data are shown in the table. Lowest mark is given, lower quartile is given, median is given, upper quartile is uh, given, highest mark is given. Given that there were no quarter, uh, no outliers, there are no outliers, draw a box plot to illustrate this data. So how do you draw a box plot to illustrate this data? Simply, all you have to do is to simply, uh, so, yeah, you have to draw it on the scale. Okay, so let me get a scale. We'll draw the box plot. Normally in the exam, they would give you the graph paper part print, printed so that you can draw the box plot on top of it, okay? So uh, let's start from here, this is zero. Okay, let me draw the scale. Okay, so you can see I have drawn a scale here. Okay, now let's go to actually mark our points. The first one is uh, the lowest value is uh, five, right? So five, that's where the whisker starts. So you start to draw your whisker at five. Okay. Okay, and then uh, the lower quartile. So the next point is lower quartile is 21. Right, so lower quartile is where you start to what? Mark the box. So this whisker goes like this until 21. Can you see? So I drew the box until the, so the lower quad, I mean the lowest value, you go on until 21. At 21, you start to draw the box. Okay, so this is the box. This is the place where I'm going to about to start drawing the box. Q1 is 21, right? Next one, Q2, uh, two, the median. Median is 28. So median is 28. So 25, uh, 25, 26, 27, 28, somewhere over here, right? Can you see 28? So you have to mark it on the scale accordingly, 25. Yeah, this is 28. Can you see? And then the Q3, the place where the box ends, upper quartile is 36. That's where the block, uh, the thing end. So 35, 36 is over here, right? Can you see? And then you complete the box. Can you see? And then you complete the box. And then the highest mark is 58. Can you see the highest mark is 58? So the highest mark 55 is over here, 56, 57, 58. And then you join. Can you see? So this is the box plot. Okay, so lower the lowest mark, which is not an outlier, then the lower quartile, then the median, the upper quartile, and the highest mark that is not an outlier. Okay, so this is the simply the box plot. Okay. Oh, uh, and one more thing, what the scale that we drew here. So you need to kind of mention what type of a scale we are using here. Over here, they are saying. A group of students took a test. The summary data are shown in the table. Basically, this shows the marks, right? 
the quartiles, the lowest mark, highest mark, and the median quartiles for the marks. So you can mention here that this is the these are the marks. Are you with me? So it needs to be uh, told. Okay. All right, we'll move to question number two. Here is a box plot of marks in an examination. Write down the upper and lower quartiles. Write down the median, work out the interquartile range, work out the range. So first look at the box plot and I think uh, we can clearly see there are no outliers because outliers will be marked in a cross. Okay, so write down the upper and lower quartile. So in the box plot, where do you find the upper and lower quartile? Lower quartile is the place where the box starts. Upper quartile is the place where the box ends. So part A, lower quartile, write the answer. Lower quartile is 30. I think we can, we need to first uh, get the scale here. So I think you can see it goes 10, 20, five squares each, which means each small square represents two units. So 30 and over here one square means it's two units. So 30 plus two, that's 32. So first thing is to identify the scale properly. And then the upper quartile. So upper quartile is uh, the place where it ends, right? I think you can see it's half of a square. So 40, uh, I think you can see it's about to reach 50. So, you know, uh, one, one square represents two units. Half a square should be one, which means this is 49, isn't it? Because it's half, it's just one half of a square, sorry, 47. Because this is uh, 50, this is 48, which means this should be uh, middle of, This value should be 40, so 48, so 47, one behind that. Is this clear? So these are some really small things you need to understand. Uh, and then the next one, part A is done. Part B, write down the median. How do you write down the median? <clears throat> so median is the line that's in the middle here, right? So where does it fall? This is the one uh, square behind 40, one square is two units. So 40 minus two, that's 38. And then work out the interquartile range. Interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1. Q3 is the upper quartile, 47. Minus Q1 is the lower quartile, 32. So 47 minus 32 is 15. And then last part, we are supposed to find the range. Guys, how do we find the range? And what do you mean by the uh, range? Range is the, what do, you, what do you mean by the range? Range is the highest value minus lowest value. So highest value, you have to subtract with the lowest value. So what is the highest value? The highest value we have over here is uh, 76. Right, 76, and the lowest value we have over here is 12. 76 minus 12, 64. Right, so the answer is, uh, yeah, 64, range is 64. Is this clear? Okay, so next I'll move on to question number four. They say the average weight in kilogram for uh, 30 breeds of dogs are shown below. I think they have not given, even though they say 30, they have only given us uh, 25 data points, okay? So we'll go with 25 here. Okay, so uh, calculate Q1, Q2, and Q3. So you can clearly see the uh, first, uh, the moment you see, look at this data set, this is discrete data. Okay, this is discrete data. And in discrete data to find the quartiles, you must have everything in ascending order so do we have ascending order 13 15 16 19 20 i think you can see it's everyone is in ascending order right no one is jumping so it's all in ascending order right okay how do we find q1 how do we find q1 q1 is n divided by 4 so n is how much here you have 25 so 25 divided by 4 is 6.25. So what was the rule in discrete data? If you get a decimal, the rule in discrete data was you must round 
up. So this was the rule we learned in the previous uh, lesson, right? So in the previous lesson, I have to all told this to you very clearly. 6.25 means you round up, not uh, to the nearest integer, but you always round it to the higher value. So 6.25 means you get the seventh value as Q1. So in your ascended, uh, in your uh, data set, which is in ascending order, you will get the value. So Q1 will go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Can you see? So this is the seventh data value, 22. So Q1 is 22. Next, let's get Q2. Q2 will use n divided by 2. n is 25 divided by 2 is 12.5. And you know the rule. If it's a decimal, you must round it up. So 13th value. Now let's round 13th value. This was the seventh value, right? Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So thirteen is twenty-six. Can you see? Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. This is the twenty. Uh, this is the median. Q two. And Q three. Three n over four. So three times n is. 25 over 4, how much is it? 18.75. So you know the rule, you had to round up, so that becomes 19th term. So we have the 13th term here, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th. So 19th term is 30. So I have found Q1, Q2, and Q3. That's done. <clears throat> okay, let's move on to part B. An outlier is defined as a value which lies either 1.5 times the interquartile range above the upper quartile or 1.5 times the interquartile range below the lower quartile. So can you see now? This time the outlier rule, they have changed. Can you see? Now the, the rule is they have given the K value as 1.5. Do you recall in the previous question, they gave different values, uh, right? Yeah. So now here that is 1.5. So all you have to do is now what? First, uh, get the upper boundary and the lower boundary for your outliers. So what is the upper boundary of outliers? The upper boundary is Q3 plus 1.5 into interquartile range. So Q3 plus... 1.5 in the interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1. Guys, what is Q3? Q3 is 30 plus 1.5 into Q3 is 30 minus Q1 is 22. How much is it? What is the upper boundary limit? 42. So 30 plus 12, right? And let's get the lower boundary. Actually, I don't even need to find the lower boundary, right? Because they're asking us to show that. Uh, no, actually, we'll get it because we will need that for part C. What's the lower boundary? Q1 minus 1.5 into IQR. We need to check the whole data set, right? Yeah, because uh, yeah, you have to calculate the lower boundary. Lower boundary Q1 is 22 minus 1.5 into Q3 minus Q1 is 30 minus 22. How much is it? 22 minus 12, right? 22 minus 12 gives us 10. Okay, so you have your upper boundary for the limits and you have the lower boundary. Now time to check the data set and see if there are any values who are exceeding these limits. So anything greater than 42 is an outlier and anything and anything lesser than 10 is also an outlier. Anything smaller than 10 is an outlier. Anything bigger than 42 is an outlier. So is there any value who is smaller than 10? So your first data value, our first data value is 13. The very first, the smallest data value here is 13. So is that an outlier? No, so this side is good. Okay, so in the middle data values, you know, there's nothing, you don't have to worry about the middle values. What about the other side? The upper boundary is 42. Any ex, any data point that exceeds 42 will become an outlier. Do you have any data values that exceed 42? Yeah, I think you can see there are two values that are causing, uh, that that uh, are outside the range. Do you see? 
So 46 and 48 are both uh, greater than, uh, 46 and 48 are both greater than uh, the upper bound, 48. So 46, 48, or you can write like this. 46 is greater than 42. 48 is greater than 42. Therefore, 46 and 48 are outliers. 46 and 48 will be the outliers. <clears throat> Okay, so you can see I have uh, drawn a scale now in part C because we are going part C. They require us to draw a box plot for the uh, for this data. So how do you draw a box plot? So you need to first mark your whiskers. So when it comes to marking the whiskers, there are two ways. Number one, you can go with the upper boundary and the lower boundary. For, so your upper boundary uh, is 42, lower boundary 10. So you could mark those two for the whiskers. Or the other option that they had given us was to use the lowest value that is not an outlier and to use the highest value that is not an outlier. So you could go with any one of those two methods. So uh, it's entirely up to you. Shall I choose with this? Who, who is the lowest value that is not an outlier here? 13, because you know over here on the lower side, there are no outliers, isn't it? So a 13 is the smallest value that is not an outlier. So I will go with 13, 11, 12, 13 here. Okay, and then the next value uh, is the first quarter, right? So who is the first quarter? Q1 value we found as 22. Do you agree? Q1 value is 22. And then the next value we have is the median. Q2 is 26. Q2 is 25 to 26. And the next value, Q3 is 30. Can you see? So Q1, Q2, Q3 is marked. This is clear. And then the next value your mark is the highest value, the whisker. Again, we have to go for the uh, upper whisker. So to go for the other whisker, you, have, you can go now. Since I did over here with 13, the lowest value that is not an outlier. When I go for the other side whisker also, I should go for the highest value that is not an outlier. Who is the highest value that is not an outlier? We just realized that 46 and 48 were outliers in the previous part. So then the, uh, the highest value that is not an outlier is 38. So you will draw the next whisker at 38, 35, 36, 37, 38. Can you see? So this is the, uh, so I have drawn the uh, whiskers and then we had, uh, are we done yet? No, because you can see there are also, what we have marked now everything else, but we have also marked the outliers with crosses. So 46 and 48. Forty-six. Okay, so can you see the two outliers? 46 and 48. Did I mark it correctly? No. I marked 49. Now it's correct, right? 45, 46, 47, yeah, 48. Yeah, so 46 and 48 are the two outliers. Can you see? So this is the box plot for this data. Okay, so I hope the box plot, uh, this particular section is, is 
uh, clear for all of you.